So during COVID, my kids are grown now. My son, Walt, uh, didn't want to share the restroom upstairs that he'd shared his whole life because they went off to college. Now they're back living at home during COVID. So every morning during COVID, my son would come downstairs and do his morning bathroom trip to the guest bathroom, which shares a wall with the master bedroom. So he also grew a Duck Dynasty beard as a 17 and a half, 18 year old boy. And then he comes downstairs and wakes me up every morning with what sounds like he is shooting a rocket off into space. Like he is laser cutting porcelain in there for 90 seconds. I feel like if our house was burning down, I could just be like, Walt, go do number one on the house. It's burning down. We gotta, we gotta take care of it. Because then I go into the bathroom to do my morning number one, kind of pumped up thinking, man, I'm like inspired by that. And it's just like the back half of a sad little rainbow <laughs> that takes 290 seconds to finish. And there's no leprechaun or pot of gold. I mean, there's a bottle of gold bond next to the toilet, but... So I have like issues now. When I go to a public restroom and there's other men there, I have like PTSD. I mean like P PTSD, but... <laughs> but so I'm at the Delta Sky Club and there's like seven stand-up apparatuses there. The three on the left and the three on the right are occupied by grown men. And the one in the middle is the open one. And I'm like nervous and I don't know if I can perform. I'm like that last horse in the Kentucky Derby that doesn't want to load up into the stall. Like, and they're like just waiting. And as soon as you get in there, they're like, and they're off. So I have to treat it like an old school pregame ritual. Like I played college football. I wasn't like a real player. I was just a place kicker and punter. But they said during tackling drills, I was the toughest player on the field to find. Like, why are you always hiding? I'm terrified of physical contact. Get over it. But so I have to treat this whole deal like it's a game. I put my headphones on and get my pregame music like knees weak, palms sweaty, mom spaghetti. You only get one shot. Do not miss your opportunity. To... Comes once in a lifetime. That's the Eminem rap song for the older generation, just making sure. I thought the judgmental half would have recognized it quicker, but it's like a pregame song. It's pretty famous. He was on 8 Mile Boulevard, not up here, north of the whatever, you know, down 20 miles south of here on 8 Mile, right? I don't know the area. I didn't grow up here all my life, but I got the gist. This ain't Eminem's territory. <laughs> what I'm saying is there's so many white people in this one place, it makes me uncomfortable. That, I flew through Atlanta from South Carolina, and I, where are the black, what have y'all done with the black people? I haven't seen a black person in two days. I don't know. feel like y'all are having a meeting that I didn't get invited to. <laughs> I guess that's not true. Y'all did invite me. But anyway, so this is like a pregame ritual to me. So this whole thing is a competition at this point that I know I'm probably going to lose. So we start the game in my mind. We're in the game. And we start, and I get off to a great start of this game. And I win. I feel like I won that game. Except it wasn't over. It was just halftime. I didn't know that it was just halftime. Apparently, I needed to take a little break and make some adjustments and give myself a pep talk. I'm in there in my head like, on any other night, all these guys would wipe the floor with you, but not this night. Not tonight. Tonight, I pee with them. <laughs> Do you believe in miracles? Yes! That's a famous speech from Miracle, the movie, the ice hockey team. Okay, I was just making sure. I'm testing out some new things here. But then we get done, we get out to the third quarter into a big lead. It would have been way bigger, but I got two delay games and uh, missed one wide right. So. But we get to the end and we're done and I feel good about my performance. And I'm on the flight. I'm like literally getting on the Delta flight thinking, I won that game. I feel good about myself. And that's when I realized that that game had gone to overtime. I didn't know. 
Not like a lot of overtime, just like a little bit of overtime. Just like a little bit of, oops, you're 50 amount of overtime. What I'm saying is I lost on a penalty. Double dribble. It was a good call though, it was a good call. But I didn't fumble. That's in your 70s and 80s. I'm not out here losing games, turning the ball over. But Eminem was wrong though, because you obviously get two shots. Maybe AM 1500 should play more Eminem. <laughs> you guys are awesome.